Can you wear the same dress every day for the rest of your life? Would you eat the same food every night for dinner for the rest of your life? There is something so hellishly difficult about monotony and routine. And so when somebody comes to me and says, you have to do 10,000 steps every day, or it's a Tuesday and I'm in the gym and my trainer is like, today is 21 squats, my brain just immediately rebels. I can't bear it. My brain says, oh God, but you've already done 21 squats before. You just did 10,000 steps yesterday. Why do you have to do the same thing again? There's no challenge. There's no new learning. There's no fun. And that's when all I have with me is willpower. The only thing that gets me to the gym or gets me exercising then is if I force myself to do so. And that's difficult. That's not always easy because when it comes to willpower, we're already exercising it for so many things in life today. You have to make sure you don't yell at your children when they find a way to overrule the parental lock again. You have to force down the desire to watch Bridgerton part one before part two comes out because you know that cliffhangers will keep you up all night. And then you're at your friend's birthday party and you have to walk past all the cakes and cookies and go to the salad bar that no matter how wonderful it sounds, it does in fact taste of carrot and cucumber. And it's difficult then to make sure you do those 10,000 steps and force yourself to do those 21 squats. And more often than not, what happens then is that you don't end up exercising. This is Sonali Acharji, and you are listening to Health Wealth, a podcast that wants to help you discover the truth about your health, but also leave you feeling really enthusiastic and motivated to look after yourself. The thing about exercise is that we know now that most of us don't do it. In 2019, the WHO released a study that was done amongst 11 to 17-year-olds around the world, and it found that 80% of them do not do the 60 minutes of regular physical activity that the global health body recommends. In India particularly, in 2017, the ICMR did another study of its own, and it found that more than half of urban Indians, and that includes kids and adults and the elderly, do not do enough physical exercise. And the funny thing is, sometimes you'll even come across research done amongst those who have experienced the benefits of exercise. So just this year, sportswear manufacturer ASICS did a study in India and around the world, and it looked at 25,000 women as a sample size. And these women said that when they started physical activity, they felt happier, they felt more confident, they felt more energized, and they felt less stressed. But despite knowing that exercise was making them feel good and contributing to their well-being, more than half of them quit exercising. And that, that, that to me is extremely surprising, that why do we stop? When we know something is good for us, why is it so difficult to make sure physical activity is not a short-term goal, like a 10,000 daily step, but a long-term lifelong habit where we just walk as much and as often as we want to? Something seems to be going wrong somewhere. And every time I go to a different trainer or a different doctor, they have a different solution for how you can motivate yourself to work out. And today we're going to get a solution from Deeksha Chabra. She is a fitness expert. She's also a phenomenal health and nutrition influencer with nearly 300,000 followers on Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Deeksha. How are you? Hi, Sonali. Thank you for having me here. Thank you for coming here so much. I, I, I just want to start off with asking you a very basic thing. Do you exercise every day? And tell me the truth. <laughs> of course. Every day. Of course. I practice what I preach. Yeah. Um, not every day, but at least five days a week. And that's a healthy um, number to exercise on a weekly basis because with exercise, rest and recovery is also very essential if you want to lead a healthy lifestyle. Yeah. 
But have you ever been like the rest of us? Have you ever found it difficult to exercise? A lot of times I do have my challenges. You're not uh, in your A game all your days. You have your moments, and especially women. We go through a lot of hormonal mm -hmm. um, changes uh, on a monthly basis, and that either spikes or dips your energy. And there are days when I don't want to go for my workout, but then... Like I said, uh, motivation and um, uh, self-driven attitude is very important. You know this is important. So when you know that, yeah. you're gonna, you will, you know, push yourself and move ahead. But that's the thing with me, you know. No matter how much I know that this is good for me, um, I think somewhere most of us don't understand just how good it is. Yes. That our bodies were meant to move. Yes. So could you maybe explain a little bit about what exercise does to us physiologically? Yes, why it's of meant for our bodies to move? So we are beings of which is made of a system. We have a skeletal system. We have a muscular system, nervous system, and everything. And everything is supposed to function a certain way and movement is is essential for all the um, all the beings you're not a vegetable right so muscles are made mm -hmm. to move so mm -hmm. is your bone so is your organ i mean every system is supposed to function mm -hmm. and when you exercise you do that kind of you tap in that kind of physical activity on daily basis mm -hmm. so you're kind of bringing all that uh, organs and systems in use and that's why exercise is important and when you do that kind of physical activity um, your you know your hormonal health you release those kind of hormones which leads to um, better lifestyle and health and uh, your organs are functioning well you're thinking straight you're feeling good so exercise is not should not be considered as something that you know I have to do for 60 minutes some come what may we had to uh, we have to bring this uh, uh, concept because if you you know compare your older generation uh, we used to uh, our parents were much active mm -hmm. so now because you have to go to office work and you have to you know sit in front of the laptop for a number of hours that movement has been restricted and that is why this concept that at least 60 minutes of physical activity is important. Yeah. Earlier, I don't remember when I was a kid, I was told, okay, go and play for 60 yeah. minutes, don't come back. Yeah. Like our parents used to call us back, okay, come back home. And that is not happening. I'm a mother myself. Mm -hmm. So I also tell my son that please go out and do some kind of physical activity because I know it is essential. Yeah. So when you exercise, you are bringing the, that balance for which the body um, will function in the right direction. So that's only possible when you're going to do that physical activity. Mm -hmm. And everything is interlinked, right? Yeah. From hormones to how you're thinking to your physical activity, everything is should be given enough attention. Yeah. So you've had a health journey yourself. Yes. Maybe... Could you tell me a little about how your body changed as yes. you brought exercise into a, you know, a fundamental part of your life? Sure. In fact, when you were talking about that case study where mm -hmm. um, a, a, a batch of women were subjected to mm -hmm. physical activity, I could relate to that. Mm -hmm. I was living a life of a vegetable, I would say. I used to just work, eat and do my chores. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Food was a therapy for me. If I'm happy, I would eat. If I'm sad, stressed, I would just um, finish an entire pizza in just a few minutes. So that was my lifestyle, which led to me gaining approximately 100 kgs of weight and uh, along with that, a lot of lifestyle health issues. And I was just 29 at that mm -hmm. time and um, a mother of a four-year-old. So... It was a concern because I was not able to even, you know, do basic playful activities with my yeah. child. And he needed that active mom. Mm -hmm. And it was, you know, ha it was affecting my mental health as well. So that's the time when I, st when I thought that, you know, this has to stop. Mm -hmm. And I have to become a better human being, a better mother. So, yeah, the motivation came from there. But then... Uh, when you start that journey and you realize what 
was holding you back? I mean, that's the only question I keep asking myself. Yeah. That what was holding me back? Why? Why didn't I do it? And you know that exercise is important, mm. but when you start doing it and you see those small changes in your mm -hmm. body, the way you think, the way you're looking, mm -hmm. and um, how you're feeling, it just motivates you one day at a time, and then. It, that's how you, you know, you look back. Now I see it's a seven-year-old journey. Yeah. So um, now I'd never want to get back to what, how I was. Mm. So I think that's my biggest motivation. So exercise did change me from 100 kgs to becoming a fitness expert and sitting here having this conversation. It is a journey and it is quite uh, an exciting and peaceful uh, aspect to look at. Yeah. Sometimes um, when we start uh, exercise regime we're very excited right yeah. and you'll sign up for a one-year membership or Absolutely. you know you're like this is the year I'm going to do it no matter yes. what but sometimes you make mistakes you and know? that's and we fine just, and so what are a couple of things yeah that you would recommend mm. people not to do when they start which okay. might help you know keep that interest in exercise alive uh, by not starting anything too intense you have to understand you're starting a journey. Mm -hmm. It is as good as enrolling yourself uh, into a new course or, a, you know, a child starting mm -hmm. his or her education. Mm -hmm. You cannot expect yourself to be so proficient on day one or day 10. It is a slow process. So if you focus more on the journey rather than the results, it becomes, an, it becomes, a, it becomes a part of your life. So... Like I said earlier, so it's one day at a time. So keep, make sure that tomorrow I'm going to work out. And when that day will come, again, keep a goal for yourself that, mm -hmm. okay, tomorrow again, I'll go for my workout and make small changes. Mm -hmm. So people often make this mistake that they start from square one and they want to jump on square 10 in one leap. Mm -hmm. It should be very progressive yeah. and you should have realistic goals in mind whenever you're starting your fitness journey. Mm. I also find it, um, it helps me if mm. I'm listening to something and I'm doing yes. cardio exercises like walking, so podcasts or um, music. But then I have come across trainers who say you shouldn't listen to anything because that distracts you or it elevates your heart rate, you know, if you're listening to pumping music or something. Um, is that true in your experience? Not at all. I, I definitely recommend uh, to have some kind of, uh, I would say, support. Mm. It could be music, it could be a podcast, mm -hmm. or it could be an accountability partner with, yeah. you know, a friend. Yeah. You, know, you enjoy exercising friends with friends. Great for this, yeah. Yeah, and sometimes trainers also, like, I, as an expert, I ensure that I am right there with my clients whenever they're, you know, going through some kind of trouble during the uh, during the process. You need that accountability partner. We are humans after all. We are mm -hmm. social beings. Yeah. So anything that gives you some kind of motivation and inspiration, you should. And that can be music, podcast, um, a person, anything. Yeah. And if that's keeping that's helping you in continuing your journey, why not? Yeah. So as a trainer, I mean, and I recently discovered this from a nutritionist who told me that um, she often finds herself giving mental health support to a lot of clients to stay on track. Yes. Do you see yourself doing that? Absolutely. And what are some of the things that you feel end up demotivating people from continuing their exercise? So Sonali, I um, train... 99% of my clients are women and um, they are coming from all walks of life. Some are homemakers, some are students studying abroad, some are at their peak of their career or new moms. Everybody is going through some sort of issues. We all have that. Yeah. Um, and especially women are very, we are, I always say we are the higher beings, not being <laughs> feminist here, but we are emotionally driven. Yes. Uh, uh, people. So as a fitness expert, you need to give that kind of support mm -hmm. sometimes. And uh, since uh, staying at, on this journey needs a lot of mental um, mm -hmm. strength as well. So it's part of my job as an expert, as, a, as their uh, accountability partner to keep them motivated. So you need to have those pep talks. 
because no, not all days are going to be the same. So, you know, there will be days where you want to exercise, but you cannot because mm -hmm. something happened. So just to keep that motivation, uh, it, it is a part of my job too, right. that I have to pep them up whenever it's required. And supposing I don't have you as my trainer, yeah. but I do want to start off. Yeah. Today I'm a newbie and I want to start doing some cardio exercises. Mm -hmm. What are the right things to do? Walking, jogging, running, rowing? I don't know. There's so much. <laughs> my so personal favorite is walking. Okay. Because uh, that's something that's very functional, right? You will walk mm -hmm. no matter what state of health you are in. Mm -hmm. So if you can, and walking is something which is not very tiresome. Yeah. So you can manage that. A and how, how, how long should you walk for? 40 to 60 minutes of walk. Mm -hmm. And if it is a nature walk, even better. Mm -hmm. But in case, like right now, the weather is so harsh. Mm -hmm. So you can, if you have access to a treadmill, mm -hmm. why not? And if you're someone who likes little high intensity, who's used to running or mm -hmm. swimming, mm -hmm. so any cardio activity is good. Mm -hmm. So basically any format of exercise is good. Where you're moving your body, it can be Zumba aerobics, with strength training, yoga, and just simple work. But like you said, the activities that you just mentioned, yeah. I always tell them you don't have to run uh, five kilometers a day to lose weight. Mm. Uh, you can do a steady heart rate cardio, mm -hmm. something that you will enjoy with music on and probably talking to your friends and then walking. And should one around. walk with, you know, the, the heart rate monitor on the finger to <laughs> check? It's it's all just to give you an idea. Nothing okay. is perfect here. And, but that uh, can help. That you can help if sense. you like seeing what's happening. Mm. So some people don't like it. Like mm -hmm. they just want to do it very organically and yeah. conventionally. I, I'm someone like that. Mm -hmm. I don't like to track how many you know, calories mm -hmm. I'm burning. Mm -hmm. But if you like tracking it, then why not? Yeah. So it's just a need. Yeah. That's it. And I have one question about walking in particular, yeah. which always like confuses me. So when you're walking, um, this always confuses me and I, I, I want to get it right. Do you walk by putting your toe down first or do you put your heel down first? Heel down first because heel is a sturdy joint where it's combined with your the bone, mm -hmm. the leg bone. So your weight will be more, you will have a stable step. So it's always recommended that you first put your heel down and mm -hmm. then your toe. And walking is better for your knees as well. Of course, it's it? less strenuous. It's less tiring, it's less strenuous. Mm -hmm. And if you have knee issues, uh, you must wear some kind of support mm -hmm. uh, too. And uh, some people have pain while walking as well. Mm. Um, so, um, Start with basic mm -hmm. and um, walking. Then probably you can go for a little bit of running or jogging, yeah. interval training. And then you can start with some kind of strength training or body weight exercises. Yeah. So that is something that a lot of women want to stay away from because yeah. um, strength training means you're going to get really bulky, really muscular. You know, I don't want to look like He-Man. I just mm -hmm. want to look fit. Yeah. Um, is that true? And why is it important? particularly for women, mm -hmm. to consider strength training? See, when I started my journey, I thought that um, Zumba and aerobics or probably outdoor walk, mm. that's all is the female fitness regime. Regime, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think we both have grown up yeah. listening to this, looking at such videos. Mm. But um, strength training is so essential, especially women after their 30s and even before because your body is changing hormonally, uh, especially after peri and during the peri and pre-menopause mm -hmm. stage or after menopause also, naturally you're going to lose your muscle. With age, we lose muscle. With age, our bone density goes down. So when you do strength training, you're going to strength, you are preparing your body for all those changes. Mm -hmm. That's, that's inevitable. That's going to happen. So, it's so essential for every woman to work out with weights because you will maintain your muscle mass. You're not going to get bulky because we don't have that much of testosterone in our body. So why men get bulky when they go to gym is because they have a testosterone. That's their main hormone. Right. Women do not have that much of testosterone. So you will only get smaller, stronger, and you will have an amazing toned body mm. with more and more weights. You're never going to get bulky. I know it, it 
might, uh, you know, when you see those women mm. athletes, you mm. get this idea, oh my God. But you have to understand they are professionals. Yeah. They're supposed to look like that. So they have a very different kind of a regime and a nutrition uh, plan and, and all sorts of things. So they're professional bodybuilders. A normal average woman, if she's lifting weight, she's only going to get healthy because mm -hmm. her muscle mass would be better. Mm -hmm. Muscle mass means strength. And uh, you strength means your body is functioning in the right direction. And when you do strength training and you're developing your muscles, it also takes the pressure out of your joints, right? Of so course. you won't develop, say, knee issues if you have hard muscles versus a lot of fat on your thighs. See, when you're overweight, you're putting unnecessary pressure mm. on your joints mm. and on your organs too. That when that weight goes away, yeah. then that pressure is released. Um, also, muscles are like tissues that are um, responsible for all con kinds of movements. In fact, joint movements also. So you're strengthening that, that brace yeah. that the joint has mm. and the weight is gone. So obviously with strength training, that's why it is called strength training. Yeah. You become stronger. Yeah. So your muscles are becoming stronger and the weight and that unnecessary pressure is going out. Yeah, because sometimes, you know, even if you come down to the right BMI, mm -hmm. you would still be having fat in certain yes. areas. Yes. And um, I remember I saw this YouTube video of a surgeon cutting open somebody who's normal BMI, mm -hmm. um, but still had flab. Yeah. And, you know, when you see fat coming out of you, you're like, good God, I, I will do those crunches now. So uh, this is called body composition. Yeah. So often we consider that a certain weight means we are healthy. Mm -hmm. That's not true. Your body composition is made of bone weight, organ weight, muscle mass and fat mass. Mm -hmm. Bone weight and organ weight, you cannot do anything. I mean, that that's that cannot be changed. Yeah. What you can change is your fat mass and your muscle mass. So always focus on losing the fat percentage and increasing the muscle mass. There is a way of calculating your fat percentage as well. Yes, but it's again, it's just for an idea. Mm. So when you go to a professional, uh, they know visually also they can analyze this that, okay. And you also can see that if you can mm -hmm. get hold of your flabby areas, that's fat. Yeah. And uh, if you can, you know, touch your arms or legs mm -hmm. and you can see if, if it is stone, that means you have good muscle mass. Mm -hmm. So why are we, when we flex, we can see all those muscular, uh, you know, appearance. Yeah. That is, that means yeah. that you have good muscle mass. Yeah. And, and that will only come with strength training. And strength training. So what, what should I start with? You know, one of the things, um, and I've often come across people complaining about the same thing, is when you do strength training, it's repetition, right? Yes. Yes. And that is so boring sometimes, yes. you know. <laughs> so do you have to go after a number or is there something else that can, you know, um, guide you and say that, okay, now you've exhausted your shoulder muscles enough or you've exhausted your abs enough? So if you're a beginner, you have to punch in a decent number of repetitions. And that has a lot to do with weights, what kind of weight you're lifting. If mm -hmm. you're going light to medium weight, then obviously you need to do more repetitions. If you're going heavier, you cannot do that, those many mm. repetitions. Mm. So, and plus the goal. But can I do five and still gain some muscle mass? No, you have to challenge. You to See, muscle <laughs> gain happens when you... But when if those, I do it every day for the rest of my life, <laughs> if I... if I You just, might see some no? difference. Okay. You will see that your, body, your arms are getting toned. But um, till the time you don't challenge your muscle... So, I have to tire it out. Yes, so... This is how strength training or muscle gain works. Mm. When you work out, the muscles are torn apart. So then with the nutrition and rest, mm. the muscle fibers again recover. That's why we get soreness. Mm -hmm. That's tearing down of the muscle fiber. Right. So when the muscle reconstructs, then new fibers or new tissues are developed. And that's mm. why you see that hypertrophy. Mm. So yeah, that's how muscle gain works. So till the time you don't do that, you will not gain muscle. Yeah. Yeah. So soreness is like a badge of honor that, you know. Yes. Sometimes pain is. I looked is. after my body. <laughs> Sometimes pain is good, but eventually yeah. that soreness will uh, reduce because your body is getting used to your workouts. And there's something called muscle mind memory mm -hmm. connection. Mm -hmm. So when you work out, you build that connection with your uh, mind mm -hmm. and muscle. And then your your muscles have 
memory and they kind of remember that mm -hmm. particular movement. And especially uh, if you're doing something for posture, suppose. So uh, you're training to become a, to have a straight back. Mm. So with certain kind of workout, you will see that your muscles will remember, okay. So with that workout, we have strengthened ourselves. The spine is stronger. So even when you are walking, sitting, automatically your posture is improved. Mm -hmm. That's This is called muscle memory. And you said um, pain is sometimes good. When is pain bad? Like when do I know that I'm doing something wrong today? When it's a joint pain, then it's it's concerning. And joints are basically where yeah. your bones are yes. meeting. So it could be knee joint, shoulder, mm -hmm. spine, mm -hmm. elbow. Neck. Neck, well, yeah. of course. Yeah. So muscle soreness feels different and uh, joint pain is, of course, you cannot mm. bend that particular joint or whenever you're bending, you're feeling the mm -hmm. pain. Mm. So you have to be very careful. Around the joint yeah. pain. And supposing, you know, I, I, I'm going to do my strength training or my cardio today. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times you just want to do the main workout and mm -hmm. you don't have so much time for warm up or, you know, a stretching cool down and so on mm -hmm. um, is that recommended and what happens if I don't warm up or if I don't stretch um, it's recommended to do your warm up and cool down because warm up prepares your body safeguards your joints mm. from an injury and uh, cool down is important because when you finish your workout your heart rate is so spiked up uh, that um, sometimes you know have you heard these people getting heat stroke mm. nowadays, they're just fainting after yeah. the workout. Yeah. That happens, and people are getting heart attacks mm. nowadays. Mm -hmm. That happens because the cool down was not done properly or their heart rate was so off the roof, they couldn't, you know, bring mm. it down. Yeah, it puts and a lot of stress. Yeah, with that sweat, when you go out, again, you get some mm. kind of, you, you get feverish and stuff. Yeah. So cool down is very important to bring that heart rate down and uh, uh, stabilize it. Mm. And warm up is too. Uh, uh, to speed up the heart rate yeah. so that you're ready for the main workout. So you don't get injured. Yes. So it's important. It's essential mm. to do your warm-up and cool down both. And you obviously must be doing fairly high-intensity workouts yeah. yourself. Um, it's summer now. How much water are you drinking? And do you eat or drink or do anything else before and after your workouts? So I, I think I'm... I keep myself hydrated and that has nothing to do with uh, the weather. Mm -hmm. But yes, when it's summer, you mm. feel like you, you're thirsty. Yeah. You're more thirsty. So yes, you have to make sure that you're... Sometimes, you know, we confuse food, uh, hunger with thirst. Mm -hmm. You are um, thirsty, but you end up eating. Yeah. That way you are, you know, you are leaving yourself dehydrated and at the same time, you're going <laughs> to overeat. Yeah. So you need to understand whether yeah. it's a thirst or a hunger. Yeah. And... Um, Keeping that mindfulness helps when it comes to hydrating yourself. Mm -hmm. um, before workout, do not drink a lot of water, uh, water because you will feel the pain. Mm. So even throughout the day, I don't recommend anyone to... You've heard this, that people get up and they drink like liters of water mm -hmm. in the morning, yeah. which I personally don't recommend. Okay. I think it puts... Uh, unnecessary pressure on your systems. Mm. So always keep a 15 to 20 minutes of interval mm. and keep sipping water. Yeah. That's the best way of hydrating yourself. Summers, there are so many fruits that are mm. available, uh, so many summer drinks that we drink, mm. be it buttermilk or lemonade or something. So th look for ways and means to keep yourself hydrated other than the water. Yeah. So that that is important to keep in mind. And do you recommend having all these post-workout drinks and pre-workout uh, meals and snacks? I mean, the market is flooded with stuff. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, some of it does claim to be organic or homemade, so, you know, um, to avoid any harmful side effects. But mm -hmm. are they needed or can you just have a banana or nothing? Or These are what? supplements. Okay. So if you have a vitamin deficiency, mm -hmm. you start having vitamin supplements. Mm -hmm. Same goes with your health supplements, be it protein supplement or any other pre-workout supplement. But how do you know if you have a deficiency? I mean, should If you have a schedule where you are not able to mm. meet the requirement, mm. your nutritional requirement, mm. just with natural food, that's the time 
where you need to bring in supplements. Okay. But if you can manage without supplements, that's the best way. That's, that's the, best the way. that's the long term goal. Mm. It should be like that. Mm. It is supposed to be like that earlier also. Yeah. Now, because we have that kind of lifestyle, we have a very fast life mm. and we have a lot of aesthetic goals. Mm. So when that comes into the picture, supplements are used. And sometimes they sound so nice, you know, like mint cacao protein <laughs> shake. It just sounds like something you want to Exotic. have. Exotic. <laughs> yeah, Colombian cacao. Yeah, it just yeah. sounds this amazing. This is just marketing gimmick. And yeah. um, some people are very taste-driven too. So they have to bring varieties. But best way to keep yourself up with nutrition is to to be organic, mm. to have home-cooked food, and um, to keep it very simple. I mean, if you cannot maintain your health with very basic food ingredients, mm. all these supplements are like, it's just convenience which may not may or may not be there for you yeah. in future. And some so, of them have a lot of sugar as well. Yes, added sugar I mean, you, that you have to be very aware what yeah, you're eating. Yeah. Uh, that's, that is um, as good as buying a biscuit mm -hmm. packet to, to a protein supplement. You have to be very aware about what is there mm -hmm. uh, written on the label and is it meeting your needs or not. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And... So that, that brings me to the other population of exercisers, those who are obsessed with it. Mm -hmm. You know, so there, there are people like me who find it difficult to make sure we walk 10,000 steps daily. Yeah. But there are people whose entire life mm -hmm. is just, just to hit that target. And, yes. you, know, your, you know, your tracker says you've done it today. Yes. It can get obsessive. Sometimes you can tire yourself out. How do you deal with that balance? How do you balance exercise and just living life sometimes, giving yourself a rest? You have to understand that exercise is, it should be done to help you to live better. And you are right. A lot of people get so obsessed that they end up overtraining. Mm -hmm. And then when life hits you hard, Everything is changing, but that exercise is right there. They're still spending that much of a, that much of time yeah. in the gym and hitting numbers and everything. But you have to understand the balance. That balance is important, be it work life, be it gym life balance. So everything needs to be balanced it out. Yeah. And you have to have this understanding that life is not going to be one straight line. It's going to be up and down. And you are the one who needs to adjust. So... You have to have that awareness. That mindfulness starts from pushing yourself to the gym, the other side, mm -hmm. to stopping where it is required. Mm -hmm. it, it, it is important in every aspect. Yeah. What you're eating from a pizza to some people are too obsessed with healthy meals mm -hmm. that when they're out, they, they just stop enjoying life. And that's also not right. Mm. You're a social being. You need to have a, have that social life. Mm. So that mindfulness, that balance is so essential and that only you can develop. Yeah. And we learn from our own mistakes. So till the time you're ready to learn yeah. and make some mistakes, yeah. everything is going to be fine. <laughs> and, you know, um, sometimes I find that prioritizing yourself mm -hmm. um choosing you and exercise is actually choosing yes. you because you will say I, I won't submit that assignment or um, I am not going to take the kid for this class you know my husband or my in-laws or my parents can do that mm -hmm. and I'm going to go for a walk instead you're yes. consciously picking yourself and there's a lot of guilt there <laughs> not just internal guilt but also societal guilt yes um and like you said, as women, if we choose to, you know, say we're going for a walk or a hike or a swim or God forbid, you know, we're saying we're going to play tennis with another male partner and you're not <laughs> going to be there um, when the kid wakes up or um, or our in-laws need something. And how do you deal with that backlash? You have to become a little stubborn, I think. I don't know if it is the right word, but, you know, that's how it works. Um Especially in Indian scenario, there is a lot of societal pressure. Mm. And uh, we have been raised with this conditioning that as a mom, you're supposed to do yeah. so and so. This is how your life should be once, you're a, once you have a child or you have mm. some family commitments. 
be it in any role or as a man your paycheck must be this much and yeah, you would but, rather have yeah. a big salary and a certain designation than you know your son walking straight and having good knees absolutely needs. so like we're talking about women right now yeah. women have a different set of conditioning mm-hmm. to uh, to and they you know i've seen women taking so much pride in mm. uh, being perfect wives and perfect mm-hmm. moms that they sideline mm-hmm. their own needs and requirements yeah. and when when you know you have certain kind of conditions health issues and that's when we re- you realize oh my god i mm-hmm. didn't pay attention yeah so let's just say that you all the listeners that uh you need to avoid that situation mm-hmm. you have to prioritize yourself if you are not fulfilling yourself how will you cater to yeah. your family's needs yeah so so that's that's the only objective and um this might sound selfish but you there's a very thin line between self care and being selfish yes. till the time you're doing what you're supposed to do and taking care of yourself i think that and and your loved ones will understand yeah if you tell them that how important it is yeah. or this helps me to become a better mom or a better wife so they will understand this and it will help of course yeah. you know i know this that health nutrition fitness it's so deeply personal and so individualized yeah so every time you meet a different trainer or a different nutritionist they'll have their own set of solutions yes but it all adds up so yeah. everything you've shared it might be different from what someone else would say yes but it's one more piece of the puzzle to figuring Absolutely. out what works for me Absolutely. so thank you for everything you shared my Mr. pleasure thank Great. you thank you thank for you. having me here thank you sometimes I find exercise is excellent for anger management. Um if I'm really really upset with something, I do enjoy punching the bag. Um there was a time when I realized that hiking made me feel really really free and it sort of pulled me away from the constraints of daily life and a schedule that was getting on my nerves to be frank. So I would go hiking and I would go running up and down these uneven slopes and I would start climbing a few trees and then I was wondering why does this make me so happy why 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 is punching a bag or climbing up and down or straining my spine why does it make me happy is it purely physiological or is there something else and a couple of months ago I was watching a video of chimpanzees and they were running around and they were jumping and you could see the way their spines were curving and when you think about it that's where we did come from we did originate from monkeys and you see their bodies their bodies were designed for this so when you end up moving when you get there you might start with a walk you might not be immediately running off to punch bags or hiking but when you get there when your body is fluid and strong enough to do all this it feels like you've come home it feels a bit like you're doing what you were meant to do what you were designed to do biologically and that always helps me push myself just that little bit more to i might not do 10000 steps but i'll still at least do 2000 a day what helps you stay motivated with your exercise routine and did you learn anything new from this episode today you can share your thoughts with us on pods at indiatoday.com or you can message us at 8588966996 when someone asks me how i remember that number i say it's because i exercise it helps my brain we are also available on various social media platforms um facebook x whatsapp channels and instagram